Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Vijay Lakshmi. Today I am discussing how to eliminate the epsilon productions from the grammar. So here epsilon productions or we can call it as lambda production. So how to remove these undesirable properties in the given grammar. So given a grammar, first observe which are all the productions derives epsilon. So in this given grammar, if you observe from the starting state, it derives A, B, C, A or B, D. And A, we have two productions. For B and C, if you observe, we have epsilon production. So we have B derives epsilon and C derives epsilon, these two productions. So now, this B and C is derived by whom? It is derived by A. So first we should write all the nullable productions. So the nullable productions here is B derives epsilon and C derives epsilon. And A is deriving what? B, C. It means B and C can be substituted by epsilon. If I substitute A derives B, C, if I substitute epsilon and epsilon for this, then it's nothing but epsilon itself. So A also derives epsilon. Yes or no? From this we can understand A also derives epsilon. So, which are all the nullable variables here now? First, we should identify the nullable variables. So, A is also deriving the epsilon. So, now any other nullable variables can we identify? No. So, that's all. So, first step is identify the nullable variables. From this, we identified S, A and B are the nullable variables. So, next step is take each production and make two columns and up try to remove the epsilon production. So here the resulting productions after removing the nullable production resulting productions make two columns. So here take the first production S derives A, B, C, A or B, D. Now what we have to do here is Apply the nullable variables to A, B, C and write the respective production. For example, first write whatever the production is given as it is. S derives A, B, C, A or yes, if I substitute epsilon for A, then I will get what? S derives B, C, A because A derives epsilon. So after substituting epsilon for A, I will get the production as B, C, A. Okay. Now if I substitute epsilon for C, then I will get what? A, C, A. A, C, A. Or if I substitute epsilon for, uh, now we substituted epsilon for 1, 1 variable. So here if I substitute epsilon for B, I will get A, C, A. And if I substitute epsilon for C, then I will get A, B, A. Okay. So, if I substitute epsilon for uh, this C, I will get ABA. So, one one time we substituted epsilon for each of the variable. Now, substitute two, two, uh, for two, two variables epsilon. Suppose if I substitute for AB epsilon, for AB epsilon, if I substitute, I will get what? CA. So, or CA or if I substitute for BC, I will get AA. Or if I substitute for AC, I will get BA. So since I want to remove all these epsilon productions, all possible productions I should list out. The other possibility is what? I can substitute epsilon for all the three A, B, C. Since BC is deriving epsilon, A is also deriving epsilon. So if I substitute epsilon for all the three variables, then I will get what? I will get A. So this is? After substituting epsilon for this production. So next production is what? S derives BD. D doesn't have any epsilon production. So you write it as it is. S derives BD, right? Just write it as it is. Similarly, take the next production. A derives BC or B. Now substitute. A derives whatever the first production is there. Write it as it is. A derives BC. Or if I substitute epsilon for C, I will get only B. Or if I substitute epsilon for B, I will get only C. So here I will get B or C. That's all. If I substitute epsilon for both, I will get epsilon. Since we have to remove epsilon, 
all possible productions we are writing. Then the last production is what? A derives B. Copy it after this. Then the next production, B derives what? B. So, write it as it is. B derives B. And C derives C. Remove the epsilon. C derives C. D derives D. This is D derives D. So, copy that D derives D. No epsilon there. So, this is the final grammar we got. That is the new grammar. G dash. The final grammar we got after removing the epsilon productions. So, this is the new grammar we got after removing the epsilon productions. So, hope you have understood how to remove the epsilon productions. That is the undesirable property from the grammar. So, before removing epsilon, we should write all possible productions and then we should eliminate. See, the number of productions is increased here now for S and Y after substituting the epsilon. Thank you.